once a giant, always a giant. For me, it's only a giant. So check it out. The D6 Squad has merch now. We got hoodies, tees, mugs, whatever you need. Check it out. Link in the description. What's going on YouTube? Diggy546. Definitely hit that subscribe button if you're new. Like the video if you like the video. And I won't tell if you click that bit. But let's go ahead and get into this. So this is, this one, man, is really, really intriguing. Orlando Brown, uh, he wants out of Baltimore because he wants to play left tackle. And I'm pretty sure Ronnie Stanley is, is at left tackle, if I'm sure. I mean, I'm, I'm like 90% sure it's Ronnie Stanley. But he's not playing left tackle in Baltimore. He's playing right tackle. And he's a Pro Bowl, you know, caliber left tackle. And he wants to be paid like it. I mean, at this point, he should kind of, you know, stop it because left tackles and right tackles in this market these days in the NFL are getting paid ridiculous amounts of money. So, I mean, I, I wouldn't really be worried too much about it. And he's on a team that could possibly be, you know, competing for a Super Bowl next year if Lamar continues to get, you know, get better as a quarterback. But nonetheless, Orlando Brown Jr. wants out of the, the Baltimore Ravens, which is ridiculous to me. I still don't understand why he would want to leave. I guess maybe he would get a you know a couple percentage points money more as a left tackle, and that's what he wants to do. You know, you get the big name, uh, you, you know, you're a big game, big name kind of guy. If you're a left tackle, you get more of the credit. So, a lot of Giants fans, a lot of Giants nation. Uh, shout out to Fitz Vegas, uh, Fitz Vegas Blue. Go definitely sub up to his Giants channel. But um, he's saying that too. Listen. A lot of people want the Giants to trade for Orlando Brown Jr. And I really don't know how to feel about it because do I want to give up, you know, a first round pick for Orlando Brown Jr.? Maybe, 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 you know, I probably wouldn't, you know, wouldn't lose sleep about, you know, giving up that first rounder for him. But would I want to give up a first rounder to Orlando Brown Jr. and then pay him 20 something million a year? That's something that, that makes me really, you know, kind of pause because paying him 20 something million a year while we have guys like uh, Daniel Jones and Saquon and, uh, you know, possibly, you know, more free agents that we could bring in. Leonard Williams, uh, James Bradbury, I want to probably extend his contract. Uh, we got a lot of people coming up that we have to pay. And I'm not sure if investing that much, mind you, he would probably be a franchise left tackle. Andrew Thomas, who you just drafted, who did pretty good his second half of the season at left tackle, will probably be moving over to right tackle, which that's no problem with that. Both tackles to me are very important positions and you need two good tackles. But uh, what if Matt Parrott develops into a good tackle? What if uh, you want to tackle so bad that you just take Rashawn Slater and plug him in? I think he can be a starter at tackle year one. I think even uh, I said something crazy about Darius Saw on Twitter today because I think he moves in slow motion. But I think Darius Saw will be a solid right tackle. Uh, he's not the quickest. He's not, you know, the quickest of feet. But I think he will be a solid right tackle in this league. And I think you need your one elite tackle and then you need a solid tackle across from him. You know, a tackle that's not going to wreck the game. And then, you know, you bolster it with solid interior offensive lineman to, to complement those two tackles. Now, we drafted Andrew Thomas to be that elite left tackle. And from what I saw his rookie year, he has all the tools to be a Pro Bowl, you know, elite left tackle, all pro kind of talent. So why would we take Andrew Thomas in this round to be our, you know, tackle of the next 10, 15 years, Hall of Fame kind of tackle, and then the next year, trade our, our second first round pick for another tackle. Now, Orlando Brown, I think, is only 25 or um, maybe maybe 24. So he's really young, which means, you know, this is essentially like drafting a, a young tackle because you're going to get, you know, probably 10 years out of him. If, you know, if you if he does what, what most tackles do, they usually play to around 34, 35, 33. So you get, you know, at least seven, eight years out of them, which which is worth a first round pick. So that's not really my concern. It's more about, first off, where are the weapons going to come from? Because are we going to pay him and pay Leonard Williams? 
and pay a receiver? No. I mean, that's just not going to happen. So where are the weapons going to come from? Are we going to get those weapons, I mean, in the second round of the draft? Are we going to get it in the first round? We wouldn't, we wouldn't have a pick. So I'm not sure if this will be the most solid move to make right now at this stage in our franchise. I think this would be the type of move to make um, when you have your quarterback signed or, you know, even if he's not signed, when you have a team that you think is a left tackle away. I think this team is is a receiver away from, from being, you know, a, a competitive playoff team. But I think they could use that left tackle if, if Andrew Thomas moves over the right tackle and Orlando Brown Jr. from an X's and O's. That makes me feel really good. That makes me feel that it just makes me feel great. Every day at night, I will probably sleep so well knowing that Daniel Jones has Orlando Brown Jr. to his left and Andrew Thomas to his right. That would that would that would be beautiful. It really would. But do I want to pay him the 20 something million and give up the first round pick? It's just a tough thing, man. It's a, it's a tough thing because. If, if Orlando Brown Jr. were a free agent right now and the Giants were to sign him, I couldn't be angry. And it, it, it's, it's not just it's, if it were just the first round pick or just the 20 something million a year, I'd be fine with it. But both, it just seems like we're giving up entirely too much on a team that's rebuilding that could probably get by with just an okay offensive line. We have Saquon Barkley. Uh, and we're paying him $9 million already as a rookie on his rookie deal, his contract is going to go up. Um, Andrew Thomas's contract is going to go up in a couple of years, and, you know, about probably four years from now because of the options and stuff. So how much money are you going to invest into running the ball? I mean, you pay uh, Saquon, you know, $15 million, you'll probably bring in another guy around $2 million or, you know, whatever. Uh, this, this new running back that will be back there will get paid. And then on top of that, you're bringing in Orlando Brown, you know, who's who's mostly a dominant run blocker. There's just a lot of resources going to one aspect when I think that the Giants need to be focusing on building around the line that we've already kind of put together, which we all saw this year. If this line, you know, if, if this offense had receivers, had elite receivers on this offense, the offensive line did fine. They did well. I mean, there, there was nothing wrong with the offensive line for most games. The Cardinals game, they had breakdowns. Uh, early on in the season, they had breakdowns. And the, the Baltimore Ravens game, sure, they had breakdowns. But if you look at all the games that the Giants had breakdowns in an offensive line, mostly, m- most of them were not because of the offensive line. Most of them were because we didn't have a receiver to save our life. You had Sterling Shepard here and an injured Darius Slayton here, and a nobody in the slot. Maybe Austin Mack, maybe Dante Pettis, who actually did something at the end of the year. But you had receivers that they just came up and pressed, and then they just sent nine people or eight people right at Daniel Jones. You only have so many people to block. (laughs) You only have so many offensive linemen, and they blitzed, blitzed, and blitzed DJ to death. They blitzed him to death. And there was nothing we could do because our receivers, one, couldn't beat the press, and two, couldn't run quick routes fast enough to be able to to counteract what teams were trying to do to them. So I think our number one our number one thing should be signing a receiver. Now, Allen Robinson isn't going to just magically come to the Giants just because we have the money to pay it, because he decides where he goes. But I feel like if you want to give Orlando Brown Jr., you know, 20-something mil, I mean, upwards of probably 22, 23 mil a year, then I think at that point, (laughs) at that point, you need to look at at signing Allen Robinson and overpaying for him. Because if you're going to pay 20-something million for a tackle, pay 20-something million for a receiver. I mean, just do it. Make a trade for a top receiver in the league if you want to do that. I just really feel that the Giants need to add that receiver before we look at improving this offensive line. Because if it, if the offensive line was that big of a need, if it, if this was the year that Nate Solder was signed to the Giants and we really needed to tackle horribly because Eric Flowers was on our team, then make the trade by all means. But if you're so great, if you're if you feel so great about Orlando Brown Jr., 
then you should want the Giants to sign Rashawn Slater. You should want them to draft Rashawn Slater with a number 11 pick. That's what you should want over a receiver because the number one need is a receiver. And, I mean, that's that's just my opinion on it. Uh, I've, I've kind, of, kind of rambled on here at the end. But end of story, I don't think we should trade for Orlando Brown Jr. There's a lot that goes into that and then on the fact that we have to pay him. So you guys let me know what you think. Obviously, I would love it from an X's and O's standpoint, but um, financially and building the future, I'm not so sure. So if you made it this deep into the video, I'm calling you a D6 squad member. If you're a D6 squad member, you got to hit that subscribe button. You got to turn on that notification bell. And listen, I make all kinds of content for NFL teams. So if you're not a Giants fan, don't worry. I'll cover your team. If I'm not covering your team, let me know and have a good one.